so i'll need to explain a little more on mtbf okay here this is the mtbf equation right you can see the mtbf equation okay uh, and coming to the explanation of each terms here tr represents result time allowed in excess of the normal propagation delay of the device okay then tau tau represents metastability time constant for a flip flop it depends on the flip flop and to is equal to a constant related to the width of the time window or aperture wherein a data edge triggers a metastable event okay then uh, they have mentioned f and a okay f means clock frequency okay and a means nothing but asynchronous data edge okay and so elaborating on this particular exponential function the pro this is nothing but the probability of a metastable state persisting longer than a time tr okay tr decreases exponentially uh, as tr increases okay this relationship is characterized by this equation okay so it's uh, just uh, to describe the characteristics okay show the relationship of tr with tau then this can be otherwise known as f of r that is is the probability of non resolution as a function of resolved time allowed that is tr so in this mtbf calculation what we use frequency of input signal and frequency of clock that is driving the flip flop okay these two terms okay and um, then coming on to this uh, metastability parameters we can just have a look of uh, what are the number of devices here and then their particular nanosecond values of tau and t naught right yeah this is uh, an explanation of uh, mtbf uh, for these devices okay for an example this when we take the mtbf yeah, for 1000 years what is the uh, f is the frequency right yeah for 25 uh, megahertz a and a is the input and then we have to calculate this resolution time yeah, resolution right time. Okay. so let's carry forward with our and uh, what about this divide by n counter do we need to have that counter or no, maybe it can be replaced by some other counter no th uh, this is just uh, for increasing the uh, frequency okay and uh, now understanding uh, clock skew in short we would uh, say that the clock signal may not reach all the flip-flops simultaneously so that means it reaches all one by one right and then the reason for the slowness is the wiring delays the capacitance and then the incorrect design okay that means uh, the capacitance may vary it may be uh, on high or low levels and uh, then the, the <laughs> capacitance is what like the, the capacitance causes you have heard of like uh, rc constant all those things right Yes. So that's that's causing the delay of clock to reach from this section to this Good. section. Actually, this is a synchronous circuit, right? Because both these deep flip flops are using same clock. Yeah. But when passing through this uh, path, all paths will have uh, like uh, resistance, capacitance, capacitance, all those things. So this causes a delay. That so that means uh, that wiring delay may also occur. Yeah, wiring delay occurs and. Uh, the same time, at the occurrence of the clock uh, edge at this time won't happen at the same time here. That causes the clock skew. And also, incorrect design also corresponds to the same thing. Yeah. We okay. should consider when uh, all these things in mind before designing. Like in the FPGA, uh, we need to uh, put the blocks as close as possible. Otherwise, we will get clock skew. That means uh, delay. Yeah. Okay. And uh, coming to the D skewed multiple cycle synchronizer, we need to understand. Now, uh, the working is almost the same, uh, but for the difference that ne it is necessary in.